Okay, the basic formula that we use to calculate future values of dollar amounts is right here. 1 plus i raised to the n. And we call this the future value. To be more specific, future value of a lump sum. Because we're just taking a one-time number and pushing it into the future. Let's take a look at a couple examples of how this might work. Let's say we have a timeline. I'll draw in some years here, and I'll number these years. And let's suppose that we were to start with $500, and we will be making 8% interest, and we want to know how much will we have at the end of five years. Plugging these numbers into the formula, we would have 1 plus... 0.08 raised to the 5. And we take that and then we multiply it by our lump sum amount, which is $500. So on a calculator, I will enter in 1.08, raise that to the fifth power, and get 1.46933. I'll round it off there after five decimals. I continue multiplying that by 500. And when I do that, I get a total of $734.66. So we can see we've got almost 50% more than what we started with because we've been earning interest on the interest. If I wanted to take this out further, all I would have to do is change this exponent. All right, let's take it out further and let's see what would happen. So let's imagine that we now have a timeline that's going to be out for 40 years. And we were to have $500. And we want to know how much will that grow at 8% interest. So we will write 1 plus 0 0.08 raised to the 40th power and then multiply that by $500. Again, on the calculator, I'll take 1.08, raise it to the 40, multiply that by 500, and get 10,000. $862.26. If I took this out one more year, just to show you, how much would this grow? Well, I'm going to multiply it like we did originally and just multiply it by 0 0.08 to see how much interest we earn on this. And we can see that the interest would be $868.98. Now, how much interest would we have earned on this 500 in that very first year, 500 times 8% is $40. So we earn $40 in interest in this very first year. But then way out here in the 41st year, we earn almost $870 in a single year. That's the hockey stick part that I'm talking about, how money really starts to grow once it gets further out in time. So this is how we move money across time. But what if the interest that we are earning is compounded more often than annually? What if it were compounded monthly? Now the term compounded, as I mentioned before, the term compounded means earning interest on the interest. What happens when it's compounded annually is the interest is earned over the course of a year, and then it's put into your account at the end of the year, and then you earn interest on it. When it's compounded monthly, what happens is they figure out how much interest you would earn in a month, and then they give you that money so that you now start to earn interest on that interest after only a single month instead of having to wait a year. The impact of that, well, let's take a look at it. So let's suppose we have $1,000 and we're going to earn 8% interest. To find out how much we'll have in one year, we will multiply it by this. 08 to the 1. That's the future value of a lump sum. And we're just letting the exponent there be just a simple 1. And so $1,000 times 0 0.08 is the interest. And added on top of it is 1,080. That's the amount of in total money that we'll have in one year. But if it were compounded monthly, we change the formula to reflect the fact that we're going to be earning interest every single month and then earning interest on that interest. 
So the interest that we will earn is now going to be 0 0.08 divided by 12. That's what we earn in one month. Over the course of a year then, we're going to have 12 of these months. So when we multiply this out, that's what we will end up having at the end of a year. So let's see. I multiply that out of my calculator and I will now have a total of $1,082.99. Now it's not much larger. I mean you can see it's $3 more than it was before, but it is larger and over time it does make a difference. So sometimes banks compound monthly, sometimes they compound quarterly. Let's just talk about if this were quarterly, you would take a thousand and multiply it by, change the interest rate to a quarterly rate, so you just divide it by four. Remember we have talked about interest rates are always annual. So when you see that 8%, it's an annual rate. If you need to change it to quarterly, you just divide it by four. And now we want to raise it to the number of periods that there are in the course of a year. And that would be four. And when we take this and multiply it out, let's see what I get. This would give me a total of $1,082.43. So it's not quite as much as the monthly, but it's still more than annual. And so we would prefer that. Ultimately, we would like to have the monthly. The more often it compounds, the better off you are. It could compound daily. It could compound hourly. It could even compound, as they say, continuously. They break up the months into days, into hours, into seconds, and they even break the seconds up into millions of, sec millions of a second. And you earn interest on that. It doesn't increase how much interest you get by that much. I mean, we can see there's not much difference to go from quarterly to monthly and if we went to daily it'd be a couple pennies more so the more often the better but it doesn't get that great it's not that great the important thing when you do this is to take note that it is important to make sure that your time period that you've got matches the interest that you have here they have to match. That's a critical part. Let's talk about this on a longer scale, something beyond a year. Let's suppose that we want to talk about uh, a 10-year time period, and we want to know how much we'll have if it's compounded at, well, the interest is 10% per year, and it's going to be compounded monthly. So how much money will we have? So plugging these numbers into the formula, if we start with 1,000, we will multiply it by, take the 10% and divide it by 12, because we want a monthly rate. And then we're going to raise it to the number of periods. We're defining a period as a month, a single month. So the question is, how many months are there in this 10-year time period? Well, the answer is 120. It's 10 times 12. And this will give us our answer. So I'll take 0.1 divided by 12 in the calculator, add 1 to it, raise it then to the 120th power, and take that and multiply it by 1,000. And that'll give me a total of $2,707.04. And that's how much we'll have. So it's important to make sure that your compounding period matches the number of periods. If everything is monthly, if everything is monthly, then this N has to represent months and the I has to represent months. If everything was quarterly, then everything has to be done on a quarterly basis. $1,000 times 1 plus 10% divided by 4. This means everything is going to be quarterly. Therefore, my exponent up here has to count the number of quarters. If we're talking five years, then we're going to have to multiply it by four for a total of 20. And then multiplying it, 0.1 divided by four, add one, raise it to the 20th, 
times a thousand is a total of sixteen hundred thirty eight dollars and sixty two cents again we had to make sure that the compounding period which is quarters matches the time period that we have also measured in quarters that's a critical part if you ever forget to make sure that these match that they match you're always going to get an answer. I mean, you're always going to get an answer, but it's not going to be a correct answer. We can now start to use this to solve some problems that we might have. Let's say, for instance, that we have a goal that we want to be able to buy a car for $10,000. And we want to be able to buy that car in six years. That's our goal, six years. We're going to earn 7% interest on this. And I just want to know how much would I have to have right now, maybe when you graduate from college, set it aside, so that at the end of six years, you'll have $10,000. So the way we would write it is, I'm going to start with the variable P, stands for payment. It's a certain number of dollars. I don't know what it is, but I do know that when I multiply it by the future value of a lump sum, and I'm going with annual compounding, you can see that it's annual compounding because I have an I here that represents annual. Therefore, I'm also counting years. And I, instead of solve, solving for what this is, I know what I want it to be. I want it to be 10,000. What would it have to be? So I'm going to find the value of this formula, 1.07. I'll raise it to the sixth. And so we'll be doing a little algebra. I'll end up with 1.50073 equals 10,000. You want to solve for payment? You'll do that by taking the 1.5 and dividing it into 10,000 for a total of $6,663.42. And if you had that much money today, then in six years, six years, growing at 7%, you'll end up with $10,000. So this is how we can use this formula to allow us to plan. To hit a certain goal, how much would we have to save?